So at this point, we've got a couple of products, and we want to talk about making more products with more categories, and then refining our, uh, our, our, our page over here, products page, because it's going to show by default all of our products at once. We want instead uh, specialization, different pages. So we'll go back to uh, the dashboard, and now we'll, we'll look at creating a couple of new uh, product categories. Uh, let's do this. Let's do it this time backwards. Where right here we created the product and then added the category. Let's instead create categories and then add products. So if you hover over products, let's go look at categories. This is where you can create and manage categories. Go to products categories. This is where it lists. We've got the pies category. The slug is just the name that appears up on the address. And usually it's the same thing you've typed but lowercase and dashes instead of spaces. So if I had a category called famous original pies, the slug would be famous original pies, but lowercase and dashes. This screen also shows you that this particular category has two products in it. If you click on that number, it'll show you these are all of the products that are categorized under pies. This is another way to look at your products. You've got a hundred products. How do you deal with them? Well, go to categories. Hopefully you used categories. And then view your products via category. We have the generic product category, which I suggest you don't use. It doesn't really have much use for you. Let's create a couple categories here then. Up on name, this is the name, how it appears on your site, and then the slug. This is, as it says, lowercase and usually contains only letters, numbers, and hyphens. So uh, the other thing is we'll have some cakes. Let's type cakes. And actually, you don't need to fill in the slug. It'll do it for you once we click Save. We've got the name of a new category, cakes, with a capital. We can have organization where we can have categories that are subcategories of others. That you have to see how complicated your product lineup is. Mine, I don't think it is, so I won't put any child categories. Description is not prominent by default. However, some themes may show it. We'll see if ours shows it, so we're just going to add a description here. Let's say a person is looking at the cakes category, so we would say something like uh, perfect for uh, weddings, birthdays, and family get-togethers. If you do right click, oh, okay. okay, so then we've got a bunch of little details we can fill out over here, <coughs> and these are related to our WP Commerce plugin. Uh, these settings override the general presentation settings found under Settings, Store, Presentation. So that screen might have said, um, you know, the sizes of our thumbnails and such. But here, now we can override that as necessary. So let's say we have a product category to show, um, if we show a list of, of, of products. Let's, let's add a product category here. So we'll browse and we'll say whatever picture, lighthouse. So that category is going to have a picture. What is the display? And again, uh, these other ways to view our products are only accessible if we if we chip in for the gold cart, right? The WP Commerce add-on. So the default is 
default view, which is just a string of a, one column of, of um, products. If we wanted to turn both of the either of these on, you have to pay the gold cart, which is forty-seven dollars. The the screen and the settings would say I think the sizes were one forty-eight by one forty-eight. If we want this particular category to be larger to stand out, we could change its size just to see how that would be. I will I will put two hundred by two hundred pixels. So only this category will have a larger thumbnail size. We can also say that this product can only be sold to these markets. I'll leave it the same as my main settings, which is uh, just USA. We can get pretty detailed because we can say here, checkout settings. Category requires additional checkout form fields. Uh, this relates to creating more types of forms, I mean checkout items over on the settings screen. Remember last week we were going screen by screen under the settings of the store and one of them was the checkout screen. By default we have one checkout screen which is the one that asks for your shipping address, your billing address, etc. But we might need more fields such as this particular one also asks you to um, you know, say what um, what message shall we write on the cake? That's a different field. So this requires more setup. We have to create another checkout field in the other screen, and then we can select it here. And if this and if these particular categories need their own sort of shipping um, set, uh, options, we can turn it on. We we don't. So I'll just create add new product category. So now we've got a brand new product category. If I wanted to edit an existing product category, how do you think I would do that? <laughs> Hover over the product and select edit. We're not going to edit any existing one, but just to show you, this is what this one looks like. When we created here, we, we added these items. Uh, so now on your own, create one more category, cookies. Fill it out however you want but create a new category of cookies. Alright, so you should have cakes and cookies. So notice you can create a category at the moment that you're adding products, but perhaps a more efficient way, which requires planning, is to create categories first and then just select which category you need. This is the part where you, before you get into WordPress, you start to and you start to organize everything. You get out a sheet, you write down, these are all my products, these are the possible categories, these are the possible uh, tags, etc. Now we've got three categories in total. Uh, now, uh, I count 16 rooms here, but there's more than 16 in class. Did anyone not sign in today? All right, so we've created... Uh, okay, good eye. See, that says cookies too, because these slugs actually are used throughout the whole site. We've already got a tag called cookies. So we added a tag to something, to a blog post, maybe? Somewhere. We added cookie, either, either a blog category or a tag or something. But unfortunately, it can only use one. You can only use these things once. 
this is a, this is an internal thing to WordPress because the database has a list of all categories, uh, and so it doesn't differentiate that these categories are just for products and these categories are just for posts. So here it's got cookies too. So you can change that if you don't like that. Yeah, and let's do that because I don't like that. So let's say instead of cookie two, cookies two, let's uh, we can do quick edit. slug. So we'll say cookie or, or something else that fits well. We'd have to see where else are, are that, that's used. And unfortunately, and I haven't really explored it in WordPress 4.0, but in my experience it's a little hard to see where else did I use that tag. Usually it's a matter of going to everywhere in your back end here where you've got a place for categories. Because you can have categories under products, under posts, and if you add some other plugins, maybe you have categories for um, for your portfolio, let's say. So I'm going to say the slug for the cookies when they are products is just cookie. Update. Cookie is already used by another term. Okay. Um, we can do... Dash picture. Hmm. We can do our dash cookies. <laughs> so this is that part of the phase about um, organization. Our cookies update. And it doesn't show um, repeating the number count to see the total in each category. That's right, we don't have any under cookies, so we have zero, but here we could see we've got two pies. All right, so three categories. Let's add now uh, another product, a cake. Uh, so we'll go with... Um, We'll go to Products, Add New. And we'll say here, uh, Birthday Cake. Description, German Chocolate Cake. Under tags, notice if you go to choose from most used, gluten free is larger than the than the others because this will change. This is like a tag cloud. This will change to show you which of these are you using most often. Uh, none of these apply. It's not going to be organic. What kid wants an organic birthday cake, right? Or gluten free, maybe. But here we'll say um, chocolate. And maybe I'm going to have a whole category of a variety of types of products that are kid-friendly. So, I don't know, do kid-friendly. Categories. Cakes should be waiting for us right there. Some in contrast, I will not set a featured image, but I will put images in a different way um, down at the bottom. We'll see the third way to add the picture. Um, so no featured image, no, no image inside the description. Uh, again, that SEO plugin, you work on that. Price, um, we'll say for this one, uh, a little more expensive because it's a really nice cake, so $10.99. We have quantity discount, so maybe we 
maybe we are having, uh, maybe twins are having a birthday and one wants this kind of cake and one wants that one. Let's say if you do buy two, then instead of them being about $11 each, $22, let's say it comes up to $20. Buy two, get them for 20 each. No, in total. What's that? Nineteen ninety-nine. Yeah, save a little bit. Yeah, I need to check this. Is this the total, or is this for each one? We'll see that in a moment. If suddenly we have expensive cakes. Again, we'll do variations a little later. Product delivery. We'll do that a little later. We've got download and external link. We'll do that a little later. Taxes. Here we go, product details. Let's explore this section. We've got image gallery, short description, personalization, and metadata. We'll get back to image gallery in a moment. Let's look at short description. Short descriptions are optional handcrafted summaries for your content that can be used by your theme. We'll see if our theme uses it. So we've got the description that appears at the very top, and then depending on the theme, this smaller description might appear elsewhere. So up on the top, I wrote uh, German chocolate cake. That's already short. Uh, over here, we'll just say something like um, perfect for a fun birthday. Party. So it depends on the theme where this might appear. So whenever I whenever I work on a on an unfamiliar theme, I I try to fill out a bunch of these different fields with different content, check out the the results, and see. Okay, now I see where this shows up. I'm working on a theme uh, for. I'm working on a project for a jeweler. Her theme is very cool, and, and she's got a lot of these fields that we can turn on. Uh, for example, the most important things are visible first, like how many carats is the, is the gold and what sizes and such, and then on another screen, a, a more SEO-friendly description, and then this little short description on another bottom area where you can see, for example, this is we're using that for um, like the history of the, of the product. Personalization. Users can personalize this product by leaving a message on a single product page. Users can upload images on single product pages to purchase logs. So these, again, depending on your product, but perhaps I want to be able to personalize this to write Happy Birthday Johnny. So if I turn that on, people will be able to leave that message. We leave a message on that product, such as please write this on the cake. Here you can set it up that a person can upload a picture. This is the picture <coughs> I want on my cake. I'll turn that on too. Notice form fields for the customer to personalize this product will be shown on its single product page. What that is saying is that when the, when the person is viewing the products page, this is the products page. The single product page is when you click on each product to view it individually. So on the page here is where the person will be able to add the message and upload the picture. <coughs> metadata. This one will depend on the theme. You have no custom metadata. You can set any arbitrary meta you like and access it programmatically via the post meta API. So we won't worry about that one. And again, it depends on the theme. Sometimes I go to a theme and go to metadata, and there are a bunch of um, fields that we can fill in here. Examples. Like examples that I've um, that I've run across are like um, a different set of thumbnails. Um, depending on, on your web browser. 
like a person comes to your web browser in Chrome and they see these thumbnails, but they come to the to it in Firefox and they see different thumbnails. Um, what else have I seen it on? Um, it's sort of notice it also says they can be accessed programmatically, programming, which means often with some JavaScript or PHP, we work with this metadata to make it do something beyond some capability. So metadata depends on the theme and what you want to program. All right, um, now let's go back to image gallery and see how can we create a, an image product gallery. We might have, let's say, a cake and we have three angles of the cake. You know, front view, side view, and then one with, with, a, with it on the plate. If I want more than one picture, that can be a gallery. So down here under Image Gallery, let's go to Manage the Product Image Gallery. This takes us back to this sort of screen, and then what we can do is select more than one picture. I'm just going to borrow pictures that are already there. So I selected all three of them. You can, if you want to remove a selection, you just click deselect. I'll select all three, set product images. So those three pictures will be uh, showcased on this product. I don't know what it looks like yet until I publish uh, and then view the product. So go back to the top and publish. I'm going to visit site, products page, there's pecan, key lime, birthday cake, more details. That's what I wrote down on the short description. That text that appears there, more details, probably I need to edit it in the code. But do you see uh, this is where people could get a little more detail. This is the description on top. This is the short description. Price, etc. Quantity. If I click on the single product image, or that is the single product view, click on its name, birthday cake, personalize your product. Complete this form to include a personalized message with your product. Please write happy birthday. Pink frosting. Upload a file. Select a file from your computer to include with this purchase. I can say up over here the uploaded picture, please put on the upper right of the cake. So this is a space for people to write whatever they want. So we put three pictures and I don't see where the three pictures are at. That's interesting. Be Not sure. It depends on the theme. They, they, they might be under here, and then you click to view them, or sometimes you click on the picture. I do see a right arrow here, but that doesn't do anything. So perhaps that uh, this plugin isn't very optimized to dis I mean, this theme isn't very optimized to display these this gallery.
Notice the short description appears automatically when we visit the product itself. And notice up here, these are the breadcrumbs that we activated last week. We're in this site, in the products page under cakes. The purpose of this is that you have multiple cakes. You can click on cakes and it'll show you a list of all cakes. I don't see a place here for the for the um, quantity discount, maybe the next screen. So I'll go to Add to Cart. I'm not sure. Let me add three. didn't pop up. Maybe on the checkout screen. So I clicked Add Cart here and I noticed I didn't get the little fancy box. But I've got Products Page Checkout. $20 for each. Okay. We need to fix that then. So here it's saying uh, price 20 each. If we put that back to 1, update, then it says 10.99. Okay, so we made a little mistake on that. The, the discount is you tell it how many you need and then what the price of each one is, not in total. We'll fix that in a moment. But So here, let's say, okay, I don't want the key lime or the this birthday. So let's go back to dashboard and we'll edit that product. So this time we'll go to products, products. We're not adding a new one yet. We're going back to all of our products so that we can edit the birthday cake. We'll put a we'll put a different picture in that gallery uh, and then edit the the discounts quantity. So you can edit. You can rearrange these. I suppose, depending on the theme, these will all display, or if you want to, on your own, change the picture manually. You just drag it to the first position. And then we were saying over here, if you buy two or more, then each one will be at a discount. Instead of $10.99, we'll just say $9 even. It seems that the first picture mm -hmm. is the one that's going to display here. Oh, so notice I've got two that use the same red flower. Oh, I'm just going to change it to a different one so that it's a different picture. So if I update and go back to my products page,
Now if I add a three of those, they've been discounted down to down to that. Now I notice that there isn't an indication anywhere on screen that that will happen. So it might be a good idea on the short description or the long description or somewhere to say uh, buy two or more for a for a discount. Yes. On this one, we never said that there's a limit, so there's no limit. But if we go into product has limited stock, here we will tell it we've only got three of them. That's how it will know there's three in total. And then what we need to do, once we have more of them, let's say we baked five more, so we have to go in and write eight. And then when it gets down to zero, we can say it, send me an email and unpublish. If we don't turn on unpublish, the product will still be there, but it'll just say sold out. So maybe you want to do that because you want to know to let people know this product is sometimes available, but it's currently sold out. And this is the funny thing that I mentioned about the in the database previously. If we do select limited stock, and here we manually put zero, that means that the product has run out. If we don't put anything, it's unlimited, but internally it's also zero. So if it was at a number that then it decreased down to zero, then it would be that it runs out. It's a limited stock, but there's zero. Say that again. Yeah, we'll get the notification, and then the product could get removed if we if we if we turn that on. So notice, okay, pecan pie add to cart, key lime pie add to cart, birthday cake, there's no add to cart, it's sold out. Although it doesn't exactly say anywhere sold out. Yeah, we should put a message in here somewhere, it's sold out. Question? Is, is the featured image and the little description image that we just dealt with, is that the same picture? I mean, does it come up with the same, or is there a, how would you select which one you use? Well, the description picture is this one right here, and it's under the description. You know, I mean, I don't mean that description picture, the detailed, you know, the one that was down below, I think mm -hmm. it's called detailed. Gallery uh, the, picture or something? The short description, there you go. Oh, description, okay, not Down the picture. In the product details, in that area there's an image gallery, but if you just look for one picture, that shows up. Is there a reason to use the image gallery versus the featured image versus the... Depending on your theme. The theme might take advantage of that gallery and actually show you three thumbnails of the picture there. So perhaps our theme is not optimized to display that, that gallery. All right, so we've got a um, couple of products, categories, and three products in total. Let's add one more product with one more product category, this time a virtual product. And then we'll organize our product pages. Let's say I also want to sell recipes. 
and I'm going to sell them via PDF. So let's talk about creating a virtual product. We'll go back to our dashboard and under products, add a new. And we'll say this is um, a recipe for chocolate truffles. So we'll say chocolate truffle recipe. The tag here is I'm going to use chocolate and recipe. And then the product category will need a new one and we'll call this PDFs. or maybe, better yet, PDF recipes. Don't worry about the featured image and such just yet, but our price here will say 99 cents. If you were just giving it away, would you just put free or just zero in there? Or? Uh, that makes sense. Yeah, we, we would put zero in there. <coughs> we put zero there to um, to give it away. Okay. All right. So then, that once once we're doing a virtual product, then we have to work with this product delivery section here. This product will not be shipped. It's not going to be sent through the mail, so we'll turn that on. And then there's a tab for download. We're not shipping anything. Turn that on, and then we'll go to download. And then here, what is the file that the person will, will download? So we'll say upload new file and just to I guess make it more authentic you can uh, you can get the PDF that we that I gave you in this class the syllabus let's say you just want to find uh, any PDF anywhere and get into the network drive there And so it says here that this product will, 
will have that, uh, that file. That file for download. So update or publish. So the big difference here is that, well, very affordable price, and then we've said under uh, shipping, there will be no shipping, and then on the download now there's a file here. Setup where it said generate variations. Or, oh, wait, never mind. That's not even in the product delivery. Sorry. <laughs> so you can add a product image for that, though, for your PDF? Yeah, we can, still, we can still go into featured image or add the product up on the description. I just want to contrast this if there's no product picture. You know, this could be a little picture of a PDF or it could be a screenshot of a page or, or whatever we want, but I won't put any picture here just to contrast it from the previous products. Okay. What's the difference between adding the image under product details as opposed to, oh, that's manage the product image gallery. I'm confused as to what that whole pro project image gallery is, as opposed to the featured image or adding um, some, you know, media in the post area. It depends on the theme. Some themes may take advantage of that gallery down there. Some might not. Okay, and and it didn't work for us though, right? No. Okay. I cannot scroll something. You can't what? It doesn't up up upload to the file. It doesn't show up in Python and everything. Oh, uh, you have to remember to uh, pub to update or publish. Thank you. So the only way that you should will know that it's a PDS file is looking at the breadcrumb. Well, uh, let me go. Let me go. Let me go look at it. Probably. So if we go visit the site and then product here. So that's a good point. See, you like, might for example like clicking up to car and to me it looks ninety nine cents. Okay, but it doesn't really say what's the PDF. That's true. So we should give the people a, a, a notice somewhere either in the product description or the title. And we can always edit the title here, chocolate recipe travel recipe. PDF like that, and we're, we're letting them know it's a PDF if people know what a PDF is. And then on the description, uh, we'll write here download our easy step by step guide. Can you download it from the shopping cart then? Or? Well, after you pay for it. Oh, that's right. When you go through the whole process. We could also then take advantage of the short description down here and say, um, you'll receive a download link after purchase. So notice for this virtual product, because we're mixing in a virtual product with a bunch of real products, it is confusing. But let's say the only product that we're selling are virtual products. So perhaps we might not need to be so detailed. But here we definitely do because it's confusing depending on the other products. Dependent on the other products. So I'm taking advantage of the short description. I'm putting it up on the regular description, download. And I'm also mentioning it up on the, on the product um, name. So now when I see that on the products page, listed there under more details you'll receive your download link there and it's got, it says download there and 
And that's right, if you, if you went this far, you would see that it's under PDF recipes, but people might not. Now at the moment, we'll take a break in just a bit, but go ahead and, and add that 99 cent PDF to your cart and then go through the process of checkout. Um, you're not going to get prompted for a credit card because our, um, our payment gateway is still set to the test gateway, which nothing happens yet. Uh, but here I've gone through the process and I've um, purchased, and it, this is the result. Thank you for your purchase. Thank you. Your purchase is pending. You will be sent an email once the order clears. Thank you for purchasing with Victor's Bakery. Any big goods to be shipped will be processed as soon as possible with love. All prices include tax and postage. Packaging where applicable. Remember, we edited that on the screen over here and we removed the part about. Any digital downloads will be included in your email. Uh, under Settings, Store, Admin. This is the email that got sent. Thank you for purchasing with Victor's Bakery. Any baked goods to be shipped will be processed with love. And we remove the part, and then I just got my notification here that I got the email. So um, previously, the default that it said was something like any products available for download will be included in your, in your receipt email. I'll check my email in a moment. But then the rest is that it shows this table, which is what this is showing, product list and total price. Product list, total price. So it automatically creates a little receipt like that. The person got it on their email. If we did have uh, PayPal set up and such, there would be an extra screen where you would put in your credit card. So uh, let's take a break, but buy that 99 cent PDF, try to go to the, through the process, Let's take a break, and when we come back, we'll see, well, how does it look like when we've made a sale from the back end? Uh, so it's 11.10. Uh, let's, uh, let's do 15 minutes, actually, because I need to take a break, too, and I need to lock the room. Can't leave people alone here, so we'll do 15 minutes. We'll be back at 11.26. Uh, uh, and we'll continue.